Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told out of voice of radio. So today, I want to take a look at the first ever World Championship winning deck we ever had in the Pokemon trading card game. Now, really, worlds as we understand them nowadays started in 2004. There was nothing in 2003, that's when Wizards of the Coast were handing off the license to Pokemon. But there was a World Championship in Seattle in 2002, run by Wizards of the Coast. And it was won by Alex Brousseau's Metal Chansey deck. So let's have a gander, shall we? Now, the main Pokemon we're using here, the, the big daddy as it were, is Chansey. And Chansey's got the attack, Scrunch. Two colourless energy, flip a coin, if heads prevent all damage done to Chansey during your opponent's next turn, that's fine. But for four energy, 80 damage, but Chansey does 80 to itself, so it sounds good, and it is good. However, you kind of got to damage yourself, and that's a little bit of a pain. But the way we dealt with this was metal energy. You see, the format here was based to Neo, the first set through to the Neo sets. And what we saw was Metal Energy was out at this stage, came out in Neo Genesis. And it says the damage done to this Pokemon is reduced by 10. If the Pokemon Metal Energy is attached to isn't a Metal type, whenever it damages a Pokemon, reduce that damage by 10. But here's where it gets interesting. You see, Chansey self damages. Chansey does 80 to itself. But with Metal Energy, on one Metal Energy, Chansey only actually does 70 to itself. Because the damage is reduced by 10. But that's not actually true. Because Chansey's Double Edge is reduced by 10 because of Metal Energy. So you're only doing 70, but now you're only doing 60 damage to yourself. See where we're going with this, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. And if you get multiple Metal Energy on there, every Metal Energy you put on reduces the damage you do by 10, which kind of sucks. But it reduces the damage you self do by 20, and that's kind of a little bit ridiculous. But if that's not reducing the damage done to you by enough, how about Unknown N? You see, Unknown N comes in, and it's got a Pokemon power... Whenever, well, Pokemon power normal, whenever a colorless Pokemon damages one of your Pokemon, reduce that damage by 30. But it stops working if you've got more than one in play. So, yeah, you, you play two in case one is prized or gets knocked out, but you only ever put one in play. And what's amazing about this is that it reduces the damage that Chansey self does. So now, if you've got a single Metal Energy on Chansey, you're doing 70 damage with Double Edge, but you're only doing 30 to yourself. See where this is going? Chansey, huge... And seriously, right, 120 on a basic at the time was gargantuan. But the big downside was you had to damage yourself loads. Well, now you didn't anymore, and that's kind of cool. Now, like so many decks back in the day, this was a deck that played a bunch of babies. Clefa's obviously the big one. One colourless energy... Shuffle your hand into your deck, draw seven cards. It's how you get set up. Remember the baby rule that all the babies had? If it's active and your opponent tries to attack, you flip a coin. If tails, your opponent's turn ends and they don't get to attack. Iggly Buff had the Pokemon Power Gaze. Once during your turn, you could basically turn off one of your opponent's bench Pokemon's Pokemon Power, which was really good for slowing down a whole bunch of decks. Anti Rogue for one colorless energy did 30 damage if you could flip heads. Now, the weird thing about Ty Rogue was it was really good against other baby Pokemon, all of whom had 30 HP, but you had to flip a heads in order to actually attack with Ty Rogue. Then you had to flip a heads in order to get through the baby rule, so wasn't always perfect. Now, we also had two Cyber here, and Cypher's very nice. Free energy, 30 damage, but we do play a single grass energy here, and that means that you could potentially use Swords Dance, and then next turn Slash does 60. 
And this was good in the early game. Use this to take out some of the littler Pokemon Chansey doesn't want to deal with. Save your big bad Chansey for the big bad Pokemon on your opponent's big bad side of the field. And then we saw one copy of Ditto. If it's your active Pokemon, treat it as the same card as the defending Pokemon, including type, hit points, weakness, etc. But it always has this Pokemon, power, and any energy attached to Ditto is any energy. So it was really nice for Pokemon that could KO themselves, like, for instance, the movie promo Mewtwo, as an example. But it was one of those weird Pokemon that could basically just counter a lot. Now, the energy line's a little bit weird here. We played four double colorless energy, because we need a lot of colorless energy. Four metal energy, because it reduces damage done. We kind of talked about that. We've then got four recycle energy. If it gets discarded from play, return it to your hand. Now, bearing in mind at the time, those energy removal cards were absolutely everywhere. So, very much worth playing something along those lines to stop your opponent just absolutely wrecking your entire setup. That would be a very bad thing. And one Grass Energy, because we can use it with Cyber. Now, speaking of those Energy Removal cards, we did play free Energy Removal and free Super Energy Removal. It was basically the case at the time that you, you had to. You couldn't really get around it. They were too good. They were frankly too gosh darn good. Energy removal just got rid of one of your opponent's energy. And super energy removal got rid of one energy from one of your Pokemon. And two energy from one of your opponents. It was too good not to play multiples of them. And we were back in the day, right, where trainer cards were nuts. So we had two Professor Oak, discard your hand, draw seven cards. It's ridiculous. We've got two Professor Elm. Shuffle your hand into your deck, draw seven cards. Although worth pointing out that that did end your turn. Well, no, that's not fair. It stopped you playing any more trainer cards this turn. You could do whatever else you liked. For Computer Search, discard two cards in your hand to search your deck for any card whatsoever. That's a bit good. Free Item Finder, discard two cards from your hand. To grab any trainer out of your discard pile. Bearing in mind back then everything was a trainer. Two energy charge. Flip a coin if head. Shuffle up to two energy from your discard pile into your deck. And it's energy not basic energy. So you should be able to see where we're going with this. This is what you're using to try and make sure that you've got all of your energy, your metal energy. This, you're playing a lot of special energy here, right? There's only one non-special energy you're playing. This gets back your metal energy, especially. Nightly Garbage Run grabs three basic Pokemon, evolution Pokemon, or basic energy, any combination thereof, from your discard pile and shuffles them into your deck. That's kind of cool. However, you're only playing one basic energy, but still, it gets all your Pokemon back, and that's good. Gust of Wind is literally any gusting. You just grab any Pokemon from your opponent's bench, drag it into the active. It's a bit good. Double Gust was a little bit of a weird one. Double Gust basically let you gust, and it let your opponent gust. But you had a bunch of free retreating baby Pokemon, so... And Cyber had free retreat as well. So as long as you were a little bit careful here, you could make sure you only had free retreaters out. And it was just another gusting. Scoop Up let you pick a Pokemon and return its basic card to your hand. Now you did have to discard all cards attached to it. But you got 120 HP Pokemon that takes a lot less damage from attacks because of the metal energy. Being able to pick it up is pretty nuts. Speaking of pretty nuts, how about Goldberry? Goldberry, at any time between turns, if there are at least four damage counters on the Pokemon Goldberry is attached to, you may remove four damage counters and discard it. Yeah, basically sat on your Pokemon until you needed it and then healed 40 damage, which at the time was big, like really big. So yeah, that was pretty good. We also had Healing Field. Once during each player's turn, they may flip a coin. If heads remove two damage counters from their active Pokemon. See, see where we're going with this, ladies and gentlemen? You see, between all of the damage that you're preventing and Healing Field, 
and Goldberry, you are just making sure here that you're not worried about anything. You are just constantly trying to not get KO'd. And then three copies of Lass. You and your opponent show each other your hand and then shovel all trainer cards from your hand back into your deck. Now, if you could catch your opponent, especially turn one going first, without a Cleffer on the field and drop Lass, it's amazing. With Cleffer and an energy, it's not so good because your opponent can eke out of it. But if you can do this when your opponent is not in a position to eke, yeah, that's pretty gosh darned awesome, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty gosh darned awesome. So there we go. This was the first deck that ever won Worlds. And if you really want, you could argue that it wasn't technically Worlds because it was pre-Pokemon Company and all of that rubbish. I'm not getting into that argument. This was the first ever Worlds winning deck. And what a deck it was. Chansey. There was a time when Chansey ruled the game. So that's kind of awesome. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are pretty gosh darn awesome nonetheless. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.